we have a full tattoo tour today. I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about the other shops I worked at too, just because the story kind of collides a little bit, but let's hop into it. Okay, so my first tattoos, which I can't show you because they've all faded, were when I was about 12 years old. I stole some supplies from the home ec class and I was doing little hand pokes on myself and other kids. Got in trouble, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Fast forward to when I was 19 and I was becoming obsessed with traditional tattoos and I walked into the closest tattoo shop around that did traditional and I got this super cool eagle perched on a branch on the inside of my arm. The dude who did this tattoo, his name is Mikey Tay and he ended up doing quite a few different tattoos on me, but he also ended up teaching me how to tattoo. Not very many people can say the first person they got tattooed by is the person who mentored them, but that's how it happened with me. And he ended up doing this rose and butterfly girl. He did this rose to no man's land, this Dan Higgs druid, my FTW on my wrist, my FTW Shaka. He did this weird, crazy frog more rose thing. He did this girl butterfly on the back of my leg. He did quite a few. I'm also trying to remember. He did my Playboy, this devil, and my Dan Higgs arrow going through a heart tattoo. So he tattooed quite a few things on me. He's definitely the person who's tattooed me the most out of anyone. During that time, I was just getting hammered in tattoos. I was working at a shop called Classic Tattoo. It's in Fullerton. Back then, it was owned by this crazy biker guy named Dave. He was a wild man. But all the tattooers who worked there were amazing and super important for my tattoo learning experience. I ended up also getting this Billy Wang tattoo on my forearm. This is probably my favorite tattoo, and I think it will stay my favorite tattoo. It just it's so strong, I'm so happy it's on my forearm. And it, it really reminds me of that time in my life when I was working at Classic, surrounded by all these dudes. Also during that time, I got this diver helmet. It's called a Mark V diver helmet with some roses. That was done by a guy named John Troller. He also ended up doing this small little flower and the scorpion on the inside of my arm. So when I was working at Classic, I was also doing a lot of uh, diving and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in life. This is before I knew I wanted to be a tattooer and I was considering going into diving as a career. Um, so that's where the Mark V came from. I ended up obviously not choosing that path and ended up becoming a tattooer instead, but it was something like really important to me at that time. And still, when I look at this tattoo, it's so strong and so bold. I always think, that's how I want my tattoos to look. I have a chummy Alexanian tattoo. Okay, so real quick, the tattoo shop I worked at was owned by a guy named Dave Mosky, but his son owned it before him. The son, Eric Mosky, was really well known in the area for bringing back this traditional tattoo to Orange County, Southern California. Eric ended up teaching chummy Alexanian. So getting that tattooed in classic tattoo, by this guy was really important to me. And I also worked with a guy named Matt Cannon who did this one on my forearm. I love the tattoo. The guy, not so much, but the tattoo is great and I always love it. He also did this little rose moon on my leg. That's kind of the funny thing about being an apprentice. You always remember how people treated you during that time. And not that Dave was a bad guy or anything like that, but some stuff happened that I was like, ew leaves an ick in my stomach. So, but you know, that's part of the fun of being a tattooer. I have this palm tattoo done by Chops Papillon. Speaking of people who I don't like that much. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. He probably just doesn't like me very much. Woo! <laughs> but that's all good too. I really like this one on my palm. It's also a Dan Higgs design. You'll notice I got like four or five Dan Higgs designs. I like them, I think they're cool. I also have this tattoo on my forearm done by Tina Tattoo. She actually tattooed that on the pyramids in Mexico City. It was such an overall amazing experience getting tattooed in the wild in Mexico, overlooking the pyramids. It's just one of those things I'm gonna remember forever. And I love how it came out. This is off of like a little Mayan design which I think are a sign of prosperity and wealth. So I just ended up getting it tattooed. Up here, 
I have this tattoo from my homie, Luis Cabrera. He's from uh, Monterrey, Mexico. I love that guy. He's one of my favorite tattooers I've ever met here in Mexico. And he ended up doing this like also Mayan skull on my arm. It's so cool. Other than that, I have this three dots from my mom. Uh, my mom's like this little old lady, but she grew up in like the hood of Los Angeles. So I thought, hey, why not make her give me a black guy? A little uh, gang tattoo on my forearm. She hated it. She hated everything about it, but I made her do it and I love the tattoo. I'll have it forever. Perfect. On this arm, I have a Mark Nava tattoo. If you're not familiar with Mark Nava, you should be. He's an amazing tattooer. But the thing is, personally, now when I look at it, I think I would have probably chose something a little different for my forearm. I would have probably gone with something a little bit more bold. But hey, that's what happens when you get tattooed. You just start putting stuff on and some stuff you really like, some stuff you move on from. It's just part of the game. So I'll either like blast over it someday or I'll just leave it there and tattoo around it. Who knows? I've been in a relationship for the last eight years with my beautiful girlfriend and she actually did this tattoo in Croatia. We found this beautiful like pool that was carved out of reef and it was empty at the time. So we sat in this pool. I had my arm like this and she hand poked it in. She's not a tattooer, but it is one of the best and coolest hand pokes I've ever seen. She also did this aloha on my leg, which we did on top of a volcano in Hawaii called Mauna Kea, sitting in a Jeep that we rented and she just like hand poked it in. She also did this OAX, which looks so damn good, but she did it in Oaxaca, Mexico. So every time we travel, she ends up tattooing something on me. These are the most meaningful. These are the ones I care the most about. These are the ones that if they were off my body, I would be heartbroken about. Also on this arm, I have this little party dragon done by a guy named Miguel Montgomery, also known by Uzi. And if you look at this tattoo, I do stuff very similar to this now. So saying that he's influential for myself is like a no brainer. It's obvious. I love his tattoos. He also did. Shut up, Grego. <laughs> Uzi also did this Chicana girl on my shoulder. When I went to get this tattooed, I was an apprentice. And as an apprentice, you kind of feel obligated to just go with the flow. And that's kind of part of the fun. But I went with my homie Billy, who did this tattoo as well as my chest. But we went together and I asked for a Mexican girl. And in my head, I was thinking of more like a classic Mexican woman, like with a sombrero and some patterns. And he drew up kind of like this Chicana chick. And I was like, well, shit, that's what I'm getting, I guess. And I got it and I love it, but it wasn't what I was expecting. I ended up getting a very similar style of tattoo by a guy named Tim Hendricks, who you probably know of. Garver's friend and fellow artist, Tim Hendricks is in town from LA. He ended up owning Classic Tattoo, which is the place where I started. So again, very meaningful tattoo. And I couldn't be more stoked on these two pieces and how they match together. I mentioned my chest a few minutes ago, but I do love my chest piece. A ship was from an old piece of flash. It was so painful and I was like, whoa, tattoos can hurt. This is awful. And then I went and I got my stomach done and I was like, wow, chests don't hurt at all. Stomachs hurt real bad. And I ended up getting the Pharaoh's horses on my stomach by a guy named Kyle Crowell. It took two sessions, about three hours each, and boy, was it painful. It hurt so bad. The first session, got through it, not a big deal. And then the second session, I went, let's be real. I got hammered before the tattoo, I was hammered during the tattoo, and I was extra hammered after the tattoo. So like, I got this tattooed, I'm in so much pain, I'm hammered drunk, I, walk over to the tattoo shop that I work at and I sit there pretty much sobbing in a lot of pain. But I'm also hammered drunk. So I like 
fall asleep and throw up all over my brand new stomach tattoo. So you can imagine I woke up pretty annoyed, pretty bummed, and just an overall sad mess. This tattoo nearly killed me. And it was one of the last times I ever got super hammered drunk. It was a mess. I was just a mess back then, but that was kind of what I was doing back then. It was a lot of fun. Let me throw my shirt back on, perverts. Okay, so let's move on to my legs. We got this Joshua Marks tattoo. So after working at Classic, me and my mentor, Mikey, we moved to a tattoo shop called Envision Tattoo. And I got a bunch of tattoos there. Um, it was such a good shop. This is where I did my first six months of tattooing. And it was just such an overall good experience. Uh, I ended up getting this tattoo by Joshua Marks. This snake done by Jacob Donnie, who owns Envision. I got this ETS, which stands for Envision Tattoo Studio, because it was like where I really technically learned how to tattoo. And I wanted something to remember that. I also have this devil on my leg, also done by the one and only great Billy Wang who did my chest and my forearm. But there's this really funny picture of me during that time that I always remember when I think of this tattoo because he was stenciling it. Goofy ass, 21 year old, hanging out with grown ass men, being a dork. Uh, I also have this seraphin, which is like an angel with uh, multiple wings. I have this on the side of my legs by a guy named Zach Johnson, an incredible tattooer. He put this purple and this light brown, which could almost be pink in the eyes. And I always think about that when I'm doing eyes because I just love that tattoo so much. I also have this crown of thorns portal thing, like blood dripping down with like blue stars done by a guy named Jaunty. Now, most of you probably have never heard of Jaunty. That's because he's not on the internet, really. Such a cool tattooer, hard to get tattooed by. But of all the tattooers I've been tattooed by, his style might be my favorite. Don't worry, you're never gonna get tattooed by him because it's so hard to get a hold of him, but still just a rad, cool tattoo. I have this black splotchy skull thing done by a guy named Selba. I believe he's Colombian, but he lives in Mexico City. So different from the tattoos I have that it stands out so well. And I just am more intrigued by it than anything. I like look at it sometimes and I'm like, I would have never done that. And it makes me happy because it's so cool and so strong. But underneath that, I have this tattoo by Tony Hundall. And I got this done at Spotlight while he was being a guest artist there. And the thing with Spotlight is that it's such an iconic cool shop. So during this time, I'm an apprentice. There's a guy named Baby Ray who works at Spotlight. If you've ever been to Spotlight and you've ever met Baby Ray, you know he's a bit of a character. But I always thought it was so funny because he found out I was an apprentice and keep him, I don't work at Spotlight, only been there once. I'm getting tattooed, I'm technically a customer and Baby Ray finds out I'm an apprentice and he sends me to run errands for him. I always remember that because it's just a funny thing to do. And like I said, most people know Baby Ray and have funny stories like that, but it was just kind of cool for me to have my own in a small little way, you know? But on this leg, I also have this tattoo by an apprentice. Her name is Tony Milky. It was the first tattoo she ever did. And I'm really proud of that because it's just like, it's cool. She's gonna be a great tattooer. And to have her first tattoo makes me pretty stoked. Uh, it's this little rose. I told her, don't touch my Tony Hundall tattoo. That was the only thing I said. The only thing she did, touch my Tony Hundall tattoo. So like you can see the lines are connecting. I'll bring that up forever, but it's something I'm really proud of and super stoked I have. Other than that, I have this folded paper airplane. I got it like five years ago. Now it's like, Pinterest tattoo of the year. I tattoo it like once a week. But back then I got it done by my homie. His name is Brandon. We were in Croatia on the same trip that me and my girlfriend were on. And he did this little tattoo for me. Okay, so I have this one done by a tattooer named Joey Rohana. I'm not sure if he's a tattooer anymore, but he was super hard to work with. I was an apprentice. It was, couldn't be more difficult of a guy to work with, but 
I probably learned the most from him out of any tattooer I've ever met and ever worked with. He was such a pain in my ass, but I still think about the lessons I learned from him. So I appreciate him more than I think about him being a pain in the ass, but he was. He also did this hand poke butterfly, which I've never seen someone hand poke color in, but he did it and it's still there. Kind of fuzzy, but it's all good. I started as a shop hand at Classic. I did my first six months of tattooing at Envision, and I did my last year and a half of learning how to tattoo at a place called Tip Top Tattoo. Now that was owned by Dre Perales. He ended up doing this spider web on the back of my leg. People always ask me, was that a painful tattoo? Surprisingly, I didn't think so. Partially because it's like a spider web, really easy to tattoo really fast, but it just wasn't that painful of a spot. The bottom of my calf, the worst, but the top, not so bad. It's all, all right. Drake Sheehan, he did both sides of my ankle with a mandala and a spider. If you don't follow Drake Sheehan, you should. His Japanese tattooing is incredible. I believe he's in Texas now, but just a straight up killer. But that covers pretty much that leg. Covers it enough, who cares, right? I got so many crappy tattoos to cover. Let's keep going. So on this leg, we get to my first tattoo. The first tattoo I ever really did on myself. Now, technically I did a couple others like this FL and this crappy skull. I hand poked the crappy skull on myself and about seven other people, but the skull's the one. That's the one we started with, but it looks like a pile of hot turds. It looks like shit. It's blown out, it's too dark, it's crappy. It's exactly what you'd expect from a first tattoo. And the thing is with this one, I had to paint this image 40 times before I could tattoo it. And then when I finally tattooed it, I still suck. And I do keep the one of the originals I painted on my desk, just to remind me where I came from and how crappy a tattooing I can be. This F in a shield done by my sister. Love it, she's a great artist, not a great tattooer as you can clearly see. But her husband who tattooed Zed, my brother-in-law, even less of a good tattooer because he blew the crap out of that Z. But that's what you expect. I'm just getting party tats, having fun on this leg. And yeah, I love my brother-in-law. I also have Misery on my leg, which was done by a guy named Caleb Quails in Missouri. I think at a shop called Iron Age. I can't remember for sure. Such a cool shop, such a cool area. Great tattoo, still love it. I also have this Stuart Cripwell on the top of my leg. Super painful, bro. Took a long time. All the crap I got, I have a heart that I got matching with an ex-girlfriend and then like another ex-girlfriend tattooed the FU in it, which is all blown out and crappy. Super fun, just reminds me of where I come from being a jabroni hanging out. On this leg, I have a tattoo done by a guy named Mono from Japan. Not my favorite, probably because it's so rockabillyed out that I'm just like, mm, not me, not who I ever was. I got it for some reason and it's stuck on my leg now. So I'll probably put a spider web over it someday maybe, but you know, we'll find out. I got this gorilla, Japanese gorilla chef thing done by Gentle Jeff or Jeff Seifert. I don't, Shefford, Seifert, hopefully I get it right. I always knew him as Gentle Jeff from his Instagram handle. Then I got this Yushi tattoo. He was being a guest artist at Classic and I ended up getting this tattooed by him. I love it. This is the only tattooer I do not remember his full name. I think his name was Chris, but it's this Kilroy and a yin yang. And I loved the tattoo. It was done in Hawaii. I was traveling there, got this tattoo at a shop called Queen Street. Great shop, super cool people. I wish I remembered his name, but he hasn't tattooed there in a long time, I don't think. So I'll find out someday. Other than that, I have my two feet done by Kyle Crowell. He also is the one that did my stomach, if you remember. And you could tell that I don't wear shoes a lot. So my feet are a little brown and beat up. My toes, by far the worst 10 minutes of my life. So awful, 
excruciating pain, but I was a little hungover. So maybe that explains it a little bit. But that's my full tattoo tour. You might be wondering why I don't have more tattoos, but I've been wanting to create this channel for so long, I knew I would eventually start filming myself getting tattooed by other tattooers. So I've been holding out a lot of the good spots. Don't have my hands, my neck, my back done yet, but we will get them done in the next couple of years. And you better believe we'll be filming it and hopefully interviewing all the tattooers because it's just part of the fun. Learn some more about tattooing, spread knowledge of sick tats. Make sure you like and subscribe. Stay tuned for a couple more videos in a few days. Okay, just so you guys know, we are scheduling for July and September in California. Look at the link in the description below. Schedule some dates for some sick tats. Appreciate you guys.